Janet, if I could start with you, how long had you been working for uh, Royal Mail when all of this happened? Um, I started working for them in '94, so it's fourteen years. Wow, so quite a while. And 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 tell me then uh, about the day when you found out that you were being accused of of stealing all this money. I mean, first of all, I suppose your initial reaction must have just been disbelief. No, the, but what's happened is if when obviously when the money the money had gone missing anyway, um, what they did was I got the auditor to come in and do an audit, um, and then the next day they just invited me for an interview, um, and mm -hmm. said just like a formal chat. So do you know when you think they're going to find out what's wrong and get to the bottom of it, um, but then when I actually arrived there, um, it became a more informal. They um read me my rights. So, and I obviously I was on my own. I had no representation with me. Um, mm. you just realised then that it's not actually about where the money has gone. All they're interested in is what you're going to do about it. How did you feel when you were confronted like that? Well, uh, to be honest, at first I want that. I want scared because I knew I'd done nothing wrong. So mm. I think within when and you know you've done nothing wrong. You don't feel like you have to defend yourself as much. Um, so for me, um, I just went, did the interview and expected them to come back and say we'd sort of found out what the problem was, but um, they didn't. I literally got suspended on that day without pay, um, which was in the um, end of May, beginning of June of 2006, um, and then received a letter in the um, end of August of 2006 telling me that um, they was taking me to court for false accounting. And when, when that letter arrived, the one that said that they were taking you to court, when this was no longer just a, a, a mistake that was going to be resolved, how did that impact on your life? That's when the fear set in, because then I'd been, I was being accused of something I knew I hadn't done. And then you then having to, I had to sort of like then go get myself legal representation, um, which at the time was Carl Turner, the MP. Um, he was my legal representation at the time. So obviously I went to see Carl um, and even he at that time basically said to me, um, so what did you do with the money? So for me, it was even worse because if I couldn't um, get my legal representative to believe me, how is anybody else going to believe you've done nothing wrong? All people see is the crown. They don't see anything else. So it's just you against them. That must have, um, yeah, that must have had a really bad impact on your health as well, didn't it? I mean, the stress of that is unimaginable, really. Yeah, well, it does. I mean, you, you, you just don't know which way to turn because you know that nobody's going to believe you because as the post office keep spouting out, they're the most trusted brand. And yeah, they were the trusted brand. So for you, for me, it was people look at you and just assume you're a thief. That's what they do. Because um, yeah. people say that don't they? there's no smoke without fire. So did you feel that, you know, people who were close to you, family and friends, were at the very least, you know, slightly doubt yeah, yeah, doubting? Yeah. The only thing I thought, I think that was... For, for like really close family and friends was the fact that my lifestyle hadn't changed in any way. I've not suddenly been going out on blooming and lavish holidays and do you know what I mean? And I think that's yeah. what I think. Um, so, I mean, I went to court on the 2nd of February um, and I was sent to jail that day. So, cause I was advised that if I pleaded guilty to false accounting um, I wouldn't get a custodial sentence, but I got one anyway. What? So you were encouraged to, to plead guilty to false accounting, even though you hadn't done anything, yeah. in order to mitigate the sentence? Yes. I, I'm yeah. really shocked by that. Uh, Tracy, let me bring you in. Uh, like Janet, I think you were only 19 when you were wrongly accused of stealing well over £11,000. That must have been incredibly frightening for you. How, how did you feel at the time? Um, the same as Janet, really, at the time. Um, I wasn't overly worried when I was asked to go for an interview. Um, I didn't have legal representation because I had done nothing wrong. Um, so at that, at that time, I didn't feel worried or scared. 
um, it was only sort of when the motion started going through court that I kind of thought, okay, this is, you know, this is getting serious. Um, on my second interview, um, the post office had taken me to the police station to interview me. Um, and at that stage, I kind of thought, okay, now I need legal representation. I'm in a police station. Even though I wasn't interviewed by the police, it was the post office themselves. Um, so, but I still believed up until the day that I was sentenced that actually they would find out what the problem was and what had happened. I still believed that somewhere the truth would come out. And what was your, your court experience like? Were, were you encouraged to, to take a plea? Um, no, I wasn't. Um, I didn't have, um, I, had a, I had a full call court hearing um, with a jury. Um, it was very difficult at the time to prove my innocence because like Janet said, you're up against the crown, you're standing there, you've got this company that are stood there saying, she's stolen the money, she's done this. Um, there was no evidence of any money anywhere. Um, the post office had access to my bank accounts, um, to everything to, to look. They never, ever found any money because there was no money. Mm. Um, and it, the court was, it was horrible. Don't get me wrong. It was horrible. Um, but I think prison was worse than that, obviously. Um, and yeah, it, you sit there now and you think, how on earth did this happen? How long were you in prison for, Tracy? I was sentenced to six months and I did three months in Holloway Prison and then I was on tag for three months. And all of that happened to you when you were completely innocent of, of, of the crime you were accused of? Yes, and it's really difficult to try and um, protest your innocence, even in prison, you, you say that, you know you're innocent you're there what you're there for um mm. and that you didn't do anything and everybody will just say yeah we're all here for something we didn't do um but you are actually innocent and you don't know how to protest your innocence because you actually yeah. don't know if yeah sorry i i lost you there for a second tracy i i just wondered what impact it's had on you having to go through that at such a young age i mean what impact has it had on your life would you say um it's had a massive impact a massive impact um obviously you know i was 19 so the whole of my adult life i've been a convicted criminal um i've had intent and i'm still having intense therapy um, to deal with the trauma um, of prison, of everything that I've gone through. Um, it's impacted the way I see things. Um, trust, I don't trust many people, um, if anybody. Um, I'm very weary of trust um, and things like that because I've been so badly damaged by the post office. Janet, you, you said that you had, I mean, you were in prison for nine months. You, you said you had issues of, of trust in a way as well, and that after you were released, you didn't want to give your real name in case people recognised you as a convicted criminal. So it, it sounds like a, a sort of a sense of shame as well, a completely it, unjustified it, sense of shame. It is. You, be, you do. You, you're ashamed. of. I was ashamed of my own name. Um, and, to, and to, like, what you're filling out, and having to declare that you've got a criminal conviction and people don't realize that I'm damaging for you for, for me do you know and it, it was to be honest the name thing was just um it was just something I just didn't really like doing I hated it because all I thought was oh, the whole's quite a small area so I thought people would just recognize me um I mean I did I went to jail on the 2nd of February 2007 at least on the 12th of April. Um, I mean, I didn't see my kids the whole time I was there. I didn't speak to them. Um, and then I, I was released on tag. And then a year later, the following year, uh, the post office had been sending letters to my previous address for the compensation that I was ordered to pay them. Um, and obviously, because I'd lost that house anyway, I didn't receive any of the mail. Um, and then I ended up in court again in 2008 for looking at a five-year prison sentence for non-payment of compensation to the post office. 
I just beggars belief. I mean, Tracy, how does it feel now to to get a semblance of justice and to have your name cleared? Is there anything else that Royal Mail could or should do? Do you think to make things right now? It's it's hard to imagine. I mean, a huge amount. Um, I think we need we need answers. Um, obviously, the inquiry are hopefully going to look into that and we're going to get the answers that we need. Um, I think a lot needs to change um, from sort of social media and things like that. Um, you see that, you know, people are writing that some things are still the same. Um, the post office is still going down the same route, but it's it's very difficult. Nothing will ever change what's what's happened to me. Um, and. I'm grateful that I've got my conviction overturned, um, obviously, but that trauma will still be there. I don't think any of us, even the ones that aren't weren't convicted, um, the trauma will still be there. What they've done is yeah. horrendous. Janet, there are some calling for the former bosses of the post office or executives at the post office to face jail if they're found guilty of, 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 of you know, what they're accused of and um, you both went to to prison over this so is that something you'd welcome do you know what whatever the law decides for them is that uh, all we need is accountability um so th this goes far beyond just one person which is the ceo there was a whole board that decided on what on what happened and it's just it's just been a chain of events. So what we need is accountability. Whether they get sent to jail or whether they get confiscation orders made against them, um, it's that's up to the law. And I'm hoping that the law this time is on our side because the law hasn't been on our side for a long time. Just finally, have either of you had an apology? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, we, we, me and Tracy, um, well, all 39 of us that got um, cleared last year, um, we received a generic letter which was signed by Tim Parker and there was an identical and mine actually went to my old address and I had to pay for it to be redirected to my new address. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but it's quite ironic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, yeah, emblematic of, of, of the farce that this whole thing has been. Well, uh, thank you so much, both of you, for, for telling me about your experience. Uh, it really is.